all these statistics show just how strong Hurricane Ian was. And some of that uh, was maybe contributed to because of climate change. So joining us to talk about that is hurricane expert Dr. Rick Nabb, who is also the former director of the Hurricane Center. And everyone is like, OK, was Ian so big because of climate change? And I think we all have the same response. You can't just say, OK, one event equals climate change. But Dr. Nabb, if we look back, even just in the last five years, we've had more and more strong hurricanes, it seems. Yeah, and there are other aspects of tropical storms and hurricanes that are concerning. So this is an important conversation to have. You know, I don't think we, like you just said, Steph, we can't just say, well, you can't attribute one event to climate change. But you can look at what has climate change contributed to this event and how is it consistent with our overall concerns with regard to hurricanes and climate change. And it's not just about strength and size, Rainfall. but it's also about the rain right. rates and the slow forward motion. So there are things that we know more than we do others. And the things that I'm most concerned about are the slow forward motion yeah, and I the rain rates. Yeah, I haven't heard that before. How does slow forward mo motion, uh, how does climate change affect the forward speed of a storm? Well, because we are tending to have more high latitude ridging. And so instead of troughs coming in and accelerating storms uh, up the East Coast, uh, they are either recurving more slowly or they're downright stalling. Look at huh. the past several years of storms like Florence and Imelda and Dorian. I mean, these really slow movers at all different intensities, slow motion makes all of the hazards worse. Yeah, and that's yeah. probably the thing I'm most concerned about is even if the strengths and numbers of hurricanes are not increasing, and I think the strengths are and the numbers maybe are just a little bit, but. I'm more concerned about the water impacts from slower, wetter storms. Because that's how most people die. Right, exactly, the water. So let's talk about this because, you know, I'd say five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, rapid intens intensification wouldn't have been one of our regular, like, hurricane vernacular, yeah. vernacular, right? But now it's something we're talking about sometimes multiple times every season. What role is climate change playing in that? Well, I think it's pretty clear that hurricanes are peaking out a bit stronger and they're getting there a bit faster. Now, we have had rapid intensification as the top forecast challenge for decades, mm -hmm. right? But over the last five to 10 years, especially since 2017, a lot of rapid intensification events right near landfall, mm -hmm. right? But right. In, the, in the 10 to 12 years before that, we didn't have as many RI events right before landfall. We didn't have any major hurricanes hitting the US during that time between yeah. Wilma and Harvey. So, but, but the problem has been there a long time and I think Climate change is just making that problem a little bit worse, in large part because of the warming waters. Okay, so we know the warming waters are an issue, right? Because that's like mm -hmm. giving candy to a baby. You know, they just eat it up and they go nuts, yeah, essentially. It's just more fuel. It's more fuel. But what does the rising sea level have to do with rapid intensifiers or the number of storms that we get? Well, it doesn't, I don't think it has much to do with the rapid intensification, but it does have a lot to do with the water impacts once storms come ashore. So with a higher sea level, then not only do you add a little bit more to the storm surge flooding amounts, yeah. but it's not linear. Some studies right, have been done. Yeah, because you raise the base sea level a little bit, then you give the, the Gulf or the ocean a little more inroads to penetrate farther inland. It's not like you add uh, six inches to sea level, then you just add six inches to all the storm surge right, flood right. forecasts. It can go farther inland and a lot higher just get, getting over certain barriers. And it's the right. same thing with the wind, too. Those go up exponentially, yeah. too. So well, it's not the damage it, relative right. to when wind you go speed. cat yeah. one versus cat four, it goes up exponentially, yeah. now, too. There are a lot of other factors besides climate change that made this event worse. There's a lot more people and a lot more infrastructure in southwest Florida than there was 50 or 100 years ago. Shoot, mm -hmm. yeah. four yeah. years ago, two years oh, ago, gosh, Dr. Yeah. Nabb, before COVID. Yeah. Absolutely. There was an explosion of movement, Absol you know? Absolutely. And also, in terms of the numbers of storms and hurricanes, that is one of the things, the overall numbers, that I think we have the least confidence about whether or not climate change is contributing. You know, that 30 storms got a lot of attention a couple years ago. Right. But a lot of that has to do with our technology to find the numerous weaker, short-lived storms. But it's the proportion of storms that are peaking out as major hurricanes and peaking out a little bit stronger. That is what we have more confidence that is changing. So Dr. Neb, let's, let's touch on that and let's really hammer this home. Do you think that with climate change, we're gonna continue to see more of a trend with these Bigger, stronger, more slow-moving hurricanes? Yeah, bigger and stronger. Now, not twice as big, right. not twice as strong. Because, I mean, we go back 100 years, we did have big, bad, major hurricanes coming into Florida, right? So this is not a new problem. It's just that climate change and the increased number of people in harm's way, the increased infrastructure in harm's way, all those things are just making 
the hurricanes themselves a bit worse and the impacts a lot worse. Here's one for you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot because I'm oh, not sure there's do. an answer to this. <laughs> is this also going to mean more hurricanes and or tropical storms farther north with all the warming that we're seeing? Yeah, there's, al there's already some evidence that that is happening, that they're peaking out stronger a little farther north. And it is also uh, a problem that you look at Fiona. Fiona was not recurving really quickly, and that went slowly and intense and large into Atlantic Canada. I mean, so there's all kinds of things. It, 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 again, it's not yeah. just about the numbers and the intensities. It's about the forward motion, the water impacts, and yeah. to some extent, the size. So we have to, you know, the conversation is almost always about, uh, are they getting more numerous and are they getting stronger? And I think in terms of them getting stronger, a little bit more, yes. But we really need to start talking more about and doing more to get ourselves more protected from the water impacts, even if they're not that strong. Yeah. A, a slow moving Florence was a water disaster. Yeah. And combined with fronts that run into them and make it right. exacerbate the situation, which is a whole other story, which we'll get to another day, Dr. Yeah, Nav. Well, stalling fronts and yeah. stalling tropical Forget cyclones, it. those are big ongoing problems. Sometimes they work together. Yeah, yeah. they do. Mm -hmm.